So in this video and the next several videos, we are going to go over policy loans, how they work. We're going to ask a lot of questions that people have asked over the years that I've worked with, um, such as what is my actual earnings rate on my life insurance policy and how much am I paying in loan interest? What I've noticed is a lot of times people like to see what the rate is, the overall earnings rate on their life insurance policy compared to the loan interest rate. But then to take it a step further, what people have appreciated even more is what's the actual dollar amount that I'm earning on my life insurance policy? How much did the cash value grow by compared to how much did the loan interest accrue by or how much did I pay in loan interest? This way I can just visually see how much am I earning from the insurance company and how much am I paying to them as I potentially look to really leverage my life insurance policy from a loan feature. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the basics. We're going to uh, bring up a lot of questions and points that a lot of people have raised. And then in the next couple of videos, we will look at some actual models, just policy loans in action. So you can see what the actual impact is to you as a policyholder when you take that loan, how it benefits you, and then also how it benefits the insurance company. Because insurance companies are very good at making money. There is a benefit to policy loans. There's a benefit to them. They earn a profit on it. However, What's the advantage to you? So we'll go through everything. So you've just got a full transparent picture and you can really make an informed decision before taking loans and then find out after the fact, I would have done things a little bit differently, but you didn't tell me that part, Steve. That's why we want to provide video education on it. So let's have some fun here. When it comes to policy loans, first and foremost, you can take a policy loan anytime you'd like. And this does include the first year of a policy. So when you first start a life insurance policy, whatever you have in cash value is what you can access. So if I've got 10 grand in cash value, that means I can borrow up to 10 grand. Now I might see it somewhere between 90 and 95% if the life insurance company withholds loan interest up front or something like that. But if I've got cash value, I can take a policy loan. In the first year, for the most part, there are some exceptions. For example, uh, you will see with some life insurance companies, when it, when it comes to survivorship whole life insurance products, you will see in the contract, sometimes they want to wait one policy year, beginning the second policy year, we can then take loans. I have seen uh, from some life insurance companies seen, or I should say heard of, them not allowing policy loans in the first year or having a limit as to how many loans one can request per year. I've seen and heard that with smaller companies. When it comes to the major mutual companies, if you've got a single life whole life insurance policy, which is 99% of folks we work with end up moving forward with in the first year, you can access the cash value, no problem if you want to. So very easy to access. Loan requests typically take three to five business days to be processed from the time that they are requested. I will add a quick side note here is some companies will want to wait 10 days. It's actually 10 business days from the date you make a de deposit until when you actually request a loan again. So let's say you threw in $10,000 into a PUA payment and something comes up the next day and you say, hey, I need to borrow $5,000 of the 10K I just deposited because an emergency just occurred. Can I do it? In a case like that, some insurance companies, Guardian's a good example of this, does like to wait 10 business days before we can go, before we can turn around and request a loan again, because they want to make sure that the funds clear from your bank account. Now, in the event of a case like that, they still will honor the loan request. What has to occur is we need to provide a uh, statement or just proof that the funds have cleared from our bank account and are with Guardian. What they don't want to occur is they send you a loan, then the payment bounces, and then they have to come back and chase you down to get money that they never received. That's what has happened to them before. So this is why they have that 10 business day rule. But that's kind of a rare exception there. The main thing to be aware of here, I'm just providing additional info, is if I've got cash value in my policy, I request a loan. Three to five business days is typically how long it takes before the funds are sent to me as the policyholder and that can be direct deposit. You can do a check due too, but most people will do it, uh, do it via direct deposit. If a policy is not a MEC, which we do not want a MEC to occur, loans are not taxable. If it is a MEC, 
the loan can be taxable if you have a gain on your policy. Also, if a policy is a MEC and loan interest accrues and we don't pay it, that will also generate a 1099. So a MEC can really cause a lot of trouble, uh, especially if I have policy loans outstanding. So we don't want the MEC to occur if our intent is to use our cash value life insurance policy. Loan interest will accrue from the date that you take a loan up until the policy anniversary date. Loan interest accrues daily. And how it accrues is that annual simple interest. Very easy to understand, isn't it? I want a quick example on that. So let's assume that you take a $10,000 policy loan and your life insurance policy has a loan interest rate at 5%. What happens here is 5% of $10,000 is what? 500 bucks. Just for the sake of making this example easy, let's assume that your policy start date, your anniversary date is January 1st, and you take that loan out on January 1st. If you were to take that loan out in June, six months later, what will happen is loan interest begins to accrue based on the date that you actually took that policy loan. So we're assuming that you have a policy date of January 1st, and we're just going to run a full calendar year here, January 1st to January 1st. Annual simple interest, and it accrues daily. So what happens here is you would take that $500, because that's 5% of $10,000, and you would divide it by 365 days because the insurance company says loan interest accrues daily. So if we divide that by 365 days, we come out to just about $1.37 per day. Now I know that is because I ran it through a calculator before shooting this video. So $1.37 per day is what will be added to your balance. Now, depending on what company you have a policy with, sometimes you'll see the actual loan balance update every month, every 30 days, depends how the insurance company actually tracks everything and does their accounting, but it does accrue daily here. So what that means is let's say six months after you took that policy loan, your loan balance has accrued to $10,250 because it will have in this particular example. If you decide to pay it off, $10,250 is your payoff amount. If you waited a full year, let's say January 1st of the following year, you have not paid any loan interest over the course of the year, your loan balance is now $10,500. And you decide to pay it off, the payoff amount would be $10,500. Now. If you don't pay it, a couple things will happen here. One, when you receive a bill for your premium, or if your policy is paid up, premiums are no longer due, and you receive your annual statement on your policy anniversary date, that's when you're going to receive a loan interest statement as well. Typically, that loan interest statement shows you the dollar amount, in this example, $500, and you'll see, please pay the loan interest. If you do not pay it, the policy may lapse. That can scare you sometimes. It can scare a lot of people over the years. Here's the thing. If, a, if loan interest is due and I don't pay it, in most cases, the policy will not lapse. If there is not enough cash value in the policy to cover that loan interest for you, assuming you're not paying it, that is a case where the policy can lapse. So again, easy to forecast. We're gonna look at examples of that when we start to look at different models. But if you've got sufficient cash value in the policy, so in this case, you've got more than $500 in the policy, the policy can loan against to cover that $500, you'd be good. If you don't have enough money in cash value, let's say you've loaned everything out, maybe you have a premium due and loan interest and you don't pay the premium, you don't pay the loan interest, that would be a case where the policy can lapse. And I would have to pay something in order to keep it alive. So it is rare, I really have to, just take everything out in policy loans and then not pay anything back, which does happen on occasion, but as long as I know up front, okay, this can happen, let me make sure I prevent it, usually we're good then. And you can always let us know if you have questions on that too. So it accrues at simple interest over the course of the year, but let's say you don't pay it. Let's wrap this example up. You took a $10,000 loan, the loan interest at 5% was $500, 
and you say I'm not paying it or I can't pay it, what will happen is the policy will take a loan against itself for $500 to satisfy the loan interest. Because the policy took a $500 loan and you already had a $10,000 loan outstanding, your new balance is now $10,500. So what happens now is the same pattern repeats itself. 5% loan interest accrues, but on the 10-5 instead of $10,000. So if it is not paid on the policy anniversary date, it will compound, it will be added to the balance. So that's where it is beneficial to pay that loan interest on the anniversary date. Now you don't have to do that. There are people that we work with that say, I'm not gonna pay it on the anniversary date because I just pay it over the course of the year. Or perhaps I'm paying it automatically over the course of the year. It's up to the individual. If you are applying money toward that loan balance, then you're covering it in one way or another, like you're paying it down, it all works out. And we can always calculate what, what the most efficient strategy is, but I did wanna add that point. Let's continue on here. So you're not required to pay loan interest if you've got sufficient cash value in your policy or can cover the loan interest for you. Loan principal is not required to be paid unless you've just loaned everything out. Then you do have to pay the loan interest at the very least, um, but the loan principal, if you've taken maximum loans, sometimes it does make sense to pay some of that loan down. You'll see an example of what can happen if that loan principal balance gets too large in the uh, next couple of videos when we go through the example of what things look like if you don't pay a loan back. Then most companies will allow you to request and repay loans through your online portal, which is nice. It's very, very com convenient. You've got a mobile app for this as well. If you're working with us, you may have heard this already. We do like to encourage people to um, definitely use our office as much as possible or as much as you'd like when requesting loans because things do happen. There's been situations where people have used their online portal. They've requested a loan from their life insurance policy. They checked off the box, direct deposit. They did everything right. And then the insurance company mailed a check. And at the time they mailed that check, the individual just so happened to be on vacation for a month or not at home. So the check showed up, showed up in the mailbox. The person needed a direct deposit. They were told it would take three to five business days. Now we have to put a stop payment on the check, cancel it while the individual is not at home, and then send paperwork to have everything sent via direct deposit. What should take three to five business days now takes almost a full month, three to four weeks, and it can be frustrating. So just being aware of those little things up front, if you're working with us and request a loan, we always send it directly to our contacts at the insurance company that you have your policy with. Or if you do do it through your online portal and something's off, you say, hey, I didn't get my money. Immediately, we reach out to the insurance company, come back to you, let you know what information we need. We just want to help ensure that everything goes smooth because this is it's people's money we're dealing with here, especially if, you, if timing's important. Like, you know, you expect your money to come today and then it comes next week. It can be frustrating. We don't want that. So some things to look at when it comes to policy loans. Every, every single time before you look at models with a loan, I would always encourage you to see what it looks like when you pay money into it and just let it sit and grow. The reason why, and you're gonna see this in the next couple of videos, is when we start to take out loans, we first get to see right next to the loan model what my policy looks like if I don't touch it compared to taking loans and paying nothing back, no principal or interest, taking loans, paying interest only, and then taking loans and paying it back in full. In addition to any custom scenarios that you'd like to see if you're working with us, this is, in my opinion, extremely beneficial to see before starting a policy because it prevents that I did not know that situation or okay, it is beneficial for me to pay the loan interest, or I heard that I do not have to pay loan interest, but when I see the balance compounding over time and the impact it has on my cash value, well, maybe now I decided that I want to pay something toward the loan balance or the loan interest. Just seeing all of that up front, people have appreciated it because we've been able to see the numbers instead of just hearing how something's supposed to work. Much, much easier to see it in action as opposed to just hearing how it should work. 
So let's touch on quick how policy loans work. So if you've got a life insurance policy, and let's just assume that it's earning a net internal rate of return 4%. So that's the actual growth rate net, not the dividend interest rate, but the net rate. You've got $100,000 in cash value before you take a loan. So 4% of that is what? $4,000. You decide that you want to take a policy loan for half of your cash value. So you take a $50,000 loan. And if the cost to borrow is 5%, that 5% goes to the insurance company, which would be what? $2,500. So I'm earning $4,000 and I'm paying $2,500. Here's why. I've got $50,000 remaining in equity, more money that I can access, but that 4% is still applied to the full $100,000 as if I never took a loan in the first place. So why a lot of people are attracted to policy loans is because I continue to receive compounding on my entire cash value. Pretend this was a piece of property. If you have a piece of property that is appreciating, by 4% every single year, doesn't matter if you take a loan against it or not. If the fair market value increases by 4%, it's on the entire property value and that's what you can sell it for. So that's similar to a cash value life insurance policy because whatever that gross cash value dollar figure is, whatever that's appreciating by, you continue to receive that. Now, if the policy is non-direct or direct recognition, that'll have a little bit of an impact. We can provide more information on that later, but you keep getting compounding on everything. Now, that leads into some questions here, and you might be looking at that and saying, okay, like, Steve, you kind of made that seem better than it is because 4% of $100,000 is $4,000, yeah, and I'm paying $2,500 here, so I'm positive $1,500, but what happens if I increase my loan to $80,000? 5% of $80,000 all of a sudden is now all of a sudden is now $4,000 and it's a wash. What if I take the max loan? I'm actually paying more in loan interest than what I'm receiving from the insurance company in dividends and interest. That kind of stuff is so important to to address up front and just show how it works because that has been one of the number one areas where I've seen a lot of people get frustrated, um, particularly I've seen this with real estate investors and individuals putting in seven figures per year into life insurance policies. They have brought that up to me a number of times and they've gotten annoyed where they've said, when I've researched this in the past, a lot of people will make it seem like I'm earning a 6% dividend on my cash value and I can borrow from it at five and I've got a positive 1% spread. But when I look at the numbers, that is not the case. So they feel as if they're almost being lied to, even though that's not the intent of other agents out there. I don't know, but I would highly doubt that that's the intent of other agents doing that. But my point is, if a consumer is expressing something, especially if it's a pain point or point of frustration with the product that I'm educating on and selling ultimately, we wanna make sure we properly provide the education upfront because have you ever had a situation where you buy something for someone, you think it functions in a certain way, you think the terms of the deal are A, B, and C, only to find out after you've committed money to that service, say it's two years later, oh, it doesn't quite work like that but I thought that it did. Nope, here it is in your contract. Well, he didn't tell me that up front. And it's like the whole relationship is soured then. Like, nope, we don't want that. So let's hit on some of these questions here. Questions we get. And I've seen this a lot. I just mentioned this. By people paying in between 100,000 per year and a million per year is how much am I earning on the policy? Meaning what's the net internal rate of return for one? And then two, what's the net cash value growth? So I can see what's the actual return if I want to associate a percentage with the cash value growth. And then what's the actual dollar amount? And then what's the cost to borrow? And we'll do the same thing there. What's the actual rate? And then what's the actual dollar amount going to the insurance company? 
And when these questions are asked, or if someone's trying to dig into it to, to get an answer to this question, it can be tough even to articulate this sometimes for some people, meaning someone buying the policy has a hard time asking this. The agent responsibility, if you're working with us, will do this. Answer the question. This is a pet peeve of mine. Do not tell the individual taking a policy out to focus on something else or change the way they think. This drives me nuts when I hear my peers and people in the business say this, you need to adjust your thinking. How I view that is don't question me on the hard parts of the policy that you might not like and could potentially lose me a sale. It's like, don't, don't do that. Just directly answer the question, even if it's something that makes your product look a little bit less attractive. And that specifically has to do with whole life insurance, but really with any product or service. Like if people are just upfront about the pros and cons, people can make decisions easier. Why do you think Amazon flourishes? Everything's upfront from an informational standpoint, but it's the client's money. So if you're watching this, considering a policy or have one, it's your money, not the agent's. So important right there. So, so, so important. So people we work with, some information here just to provide awareness. Most individuals that we work with will repay loans <laughs> and or the loan interest during working years. Meaning if you're using the policy, you're borrowing, repaying, borrowing, investing in your business and real estate, whatever it might be. A lot of times people we work with in that category will repay the loans simply because it's in their best interest when we look at the overall performance of the policy. And not everybody wants to see the numbers, we'll crunch it for them. And then they say, okay, what direction should I go based on the numbers since you did it for me? It makes sense to pay the loan interest at least or pay off your loan and then add more money into PUAs later or vice versa. But again, doing that up front, and here's the point, most people will repay loans, and then most individuals will not repay loans or loan interest during retirement years because they're taking income from the life insurance policy. If I take $50,000 from my policy, it doesn't make sense then to write a check for $2,500 to the insurance company to cover the loan interest. Like, no, I just wanna take income, I'm going to enjoy the policy. The agent's responsibility is to make sure the policy does not lapse at any point in time and we have a sufficient death benefit left over for the client's beneficiaries, if that's what the client wants. Some people just wanna take the maximum amount of income. Some additional information here, wealthy individuals, and really this, advisors, this one's big. Advisors will often examine the net growth rate versus the cost to borrow, call it IRR, first loan interest, interest rate, kind of what we hit up there. And a sales tactic we see used quite a bit in the industry is agents will instruct clients not to compare rates and instead focus on the dollar amount that the cash value is growing by. I'm not a big fan of that. At, for example, before I just make a statement and move on, is if you've got $100,000 earning 4%, like the example we looked at earlier, that's $4,000. If you loaned $50,000 at 5%, that's $2,500. So a lot of times what people will do, people in the business, is say, okay, you've earned 4% on the full $100,000 here. So you earned $4,000 and you only paid $2,500 in loan interest. That is true because I, because I only lo loaned half of my equity. What happens if I borrow $80,000 or $90,000? Make sure that that is disclosed as well. So my point is, is we do want full disclosure, disclosure, not just the parts that make the product look good. And this is coming from our company, from me. How we drive the majority of our revenue is through life insurance policy sales. So I'm not beating up the product that I sell, but we do want to be transparent about it upfront. So I hope that this video helped in terms of additional information and awareness. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at loans in action, which will be a lot of fun. So thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.